It is the Week 17 edition of the OT presented by Lowe's, which means that by the end of the show, you will know everything there is to know about the playoff scenarios for 2018-19. The Saints, despite losing today, still own home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys won an exciting game against the Giants. Atlanta came back to knock off Tampa Bay. Detroit blanked Green Bay 31-0. By the way, Aaron Rodgers left that one with a concussion. And Buffalo, easy win over the Miami Dolphins. And so up to date, up to the second, here's what the playoff bracket looks like in both the AFC and the NFC. Not much has changed except at the bottom where the Vikings have been replaced by the Philadelphia Eagles. And as we look at the wild card matchups, first of all, in the AFC, the only thing left to decide is tonight's Colts-Titans winner will make it into the playoffs as a wild card. They will take on the Houston Texans while the Chargers and the winner of the Ravens and Steelers or are still left there on the other side. Philadelphia and the Bears will meet and the NFC, along with the Seattle Seahawks and Dallas Cowboys, a rematch of a week three game in which the Seahawks won rather easily. But the big question for that Eagles-Bears contest is who's going to be the quarterback? Carson Wentz has been out. Nick Foles played today, started, but had to leave the game. Nate, Nate Sutfeld Sutfeld. finished up. The kid out of Indiana in just his third year. We want to bring in Jake Glazer right now to get the latest on what the quarterback situation is for the Eagles going forward. Jake? Well, Kurt, you saw Nick Foles go in the locker room. He did get x-rays on his chest area, sternum, and the ribs. Right now, they're just calling it bruised ribs. He was in an awful lot of pain when he got taken in to get those x-rays. However, they want to be cautious. They do have an MRI scheduled for tomorrow morning before they make a decision on Nick Foles. Again, he was in a lot of pain when it first happened. Not as much pain right now. And also, just a side note here, is they are scheduling a scan for Carson Wentz for his back later this week, just in case there's an outside shot he could be ready for the playoffs all right so lots to talk about there maybe Carson Wentz comes back maybe he doesn't hopefully Nick Foles does if not then he bet maybe down to the third string quarterback the only chance that Pittsburgh has to make it into the playoffs would be for the Tennessee Indianapolis game tonight to end in a tie if one team wins Pittsburgh misses the playoffs Michael I think when you take a look at the start of this season Minnesota and Pittsburgh are probably two teams a lot of people would even picked to go to the Super Bowl. Now both are on the verge of missing the playoffs. And I, I think Minnesota's a little bit of a different boat bringing in a new quarterback. But with Pittsburgh, you saw all you know all the talent that they had there. And and when you just see these guys play it, they're, they're so inconsistent. And I think that's the frustrating thing <coughs> about the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in Minnesota, if you're Kirk, if you're if you, they're frustrated, I'm sure Kirk Cousins is frustrated. The season hasn't gone anywhere near. Um, what I'm pretty sure he expected, what the Vikings expected when they brought him in, and that's TV, like I say, gave him all that money. But it, 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 but this is a guy who is a talented quarterback, but it just didn't translate in Minnesota this season. He was season. the missing piece. He was the missing piece, but it didn't elevate it as much as they wish they elevated the quarterback position when they brought him in. Today was confusing. I, I, this Vikings team is far too talented to play the way they did at home in a play-in game. Disappointing. When you really need yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, you really I expected need it to them to play fun. like their hair was on fire. I mean, he I had really 132 when you, yards. When you, when you think that you're one player away, that's to me, is that's just a kiss of death right there. You're, Particularly at the quarterback position. Uh, yeah, I don't care what position. Well, yeah, especially quarterback yeah. position. Because, number one, you're expecting <laughs> that quarterback to come in. He's got to learn a brand-new system. Mm -hmm. He's got to get used to all those players. And you just turn, turn the switch on and, and, and do that. That oh, takes they, time. And they change coordinators. Exactly. And right then they with, fire the quarterback. With three weeks ago. That's exactly and, and right. And you get it. Uh, you know, you want your team to be more balanced, play to the strength of your football team, which is your defense. But still, I go back to the same thing. We could talk about the quarterback. We could talk about the talent. It's how they played today. Yeah. It, that's yeah. the disappointing the sense of emergency. Well, on yes. the flip side, you take a look at the Chicago Bears team. And this is a team that theoretically had nothing to play for. They were locked into the three seed. Now that the Rams game has gone final, L.A. will be the number two seed. But they came out. They won the game. They go from five <laughs> wins last year to 12 fact. this year, yeah. winning nine of their final ten as they go into the playoffs. Philly's coming, which means we are going to have to contain Howie Long as his sons will be going head-to-head. -head. Yep. Kyle Long of the Bears and Chris Long of the Eagles next week. Some would say it's a good problem to have. <laughs> First world problem. I don't know who they are. Did, but didn't, our, didn't our camera guy, George, ask you who you're rooting for? Who are you rooting for? And and George, that's the dumbest question I've ever heard in my life. Don't do that. Tony, but talk a little bit about this Bears. 
bare his teeth. <laughs> well, who do you think's going to win, Howie? Uh, you know, I'm oh, not going to put you on that. No, <laughs> and who, that's the second and who dumbest question for? I've ever heard. Who are you rooting for? <laughs> now, well, no, I, I, think, I think when you look at this team right there, for them to do what they did today, to go into that dome and beat them the way they did, we talk about the Vikings, how frustrating it was, but... I think you have to give the Chicago Bears a little bit of credit. They were able to run the football with Jordan Howard. He had over 100 yards. Mitchell Trubisky, I think we all share the same kind of frustrations with him. He, like, he'll, he'll, he'll hit the three-point shot with the guy in his face, but then miss the layup sometime. But I still think they can win with that because that defense is just outstanding. I mean, you got Khalil Mack, best, one of the best defensive Trubisky players in the NFL. made He's great. More really good throws today than I think in any game I've seen. You can always take a Deep great de- you can take a great defense on the road and play mm-hmm. anywhere That's in true. the NFL, Very and they'll play well. They just do. Yeah. Offense is a different story. I agree. Yeah. Well, the Bears are playing as well as anybody in the NFC right now. So are the Philadelphia Eagles, so that's going to be an intriguing matchup to watch. Those two teams will be playing on Wild Card Weekend. Keep in mind, though, the Saints and the Rams both have buys now after the Rams clinched the number two seed with their win over the San Francisco 49ers. Look, we don't know about the health of of Nick Foles next week, but if he is healthy, and Jay says there's a small chance Carson Wentz would be healthy, which guy would you play going into quarterback? Wentz, who's your guy, or Foles, who got you here? Well, whoever's the healthiest, obvious. I think, I think, I think that uh, Foles is going to be fine. I watched him when he got, when he got hit. I watched him when he, when he got up, and I don't know if he's got a rib injury. Yeah, you don't well, push I, up and get off of I, a rib I injury. Think, I think it was more of the shot he took from Clowney a week ago. Really? Yeah. Well, anyway, well maybe they, the chest maybe they had blocked it somehow. Well, that's and what Jay said off. it was the chest. But, but if they're both healthy, who do you start? <laughs> well, your starting quarterback is Wentz. That's who you start. I'm sorry. I, I think you stay with Foles, but that's what they would do. The Sudfeld kid is a third-year kid out of Indiana that obviously has not been active, came in and played and played well today. They, very few teams keep three quarterbacks, and Philadelphia is one of those teams that do that. If The only reason they kept him was they knew that if they got rid of him, he was liked well enough around the league that he would be picked up. But asking him who he's going to start out of those two is like asking Howie who's going to win like, the game. But I, how are you going to pick the game next week, How are you going to pick the game next week? That's the big question here at this desk. First of oh, all, let me you say this. Do? I have Kyle Long and Chris Long's phone number, and they will return Uncle Terry's calls. Okay. Next week, America, I will have all the insight of, to what's going on. So, <laughs> so answer this, Howie. Who, you got to you – where are you yeah. leaning? Where are you leaning, big guy? Where are you leaning? <laughs> Call my wife. I think we have made the point that Howie's sons are playing in a playoff game next week. Uh, We've got other teams playing in playoffs next week as well, including the NFC East champion Dallas Cowboys. They will host the Seattle Seahawks. Jay Glazer reported in our pregame show that as many as seven to nine coaches will be fired, so they will be heading home. Jay, has that already started? It had actually started about a half hour ago. The coaching carousel is starting to spin around, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the first to do it, they've gotten rid of their head coach, Dirk Carter. Jacksonville Jaguars, they have announced that their head coach, Doug Marone, and GM Dave Caldwell will be back. Playoff injuries. We just talked about Nick Foles, a couple others. Big Rams got a big scare when their left tackle, Andrew Whitworth, went down. Knee injury. Just got a text from him, though. He said, bruised kneecap, should be good with the bye week. And the Dallas Cowboys got a scare with Leighton Vandervesh. Uh, Van he went down. He got his shin kicked three times in a row. Same spot. Just a bruised shin. They think he'll be good to go for this week. All right, those two teams breathing a big sigh of relief. And Howie, as we take a look at the AFC playoff picture, I think the Baltimore Ravens have to be breathing a little sigh of relief. They came close to losing this game against the Cleveland Browns, which would have eliminated them in the playoffs. Instead, they wind up winning the division, and they will host the uh, the Los Angeles Chargers next week. You know, in the league, implemented you know a lot of the from a scheduling standpoint, division games towards the end of the season it makes it more all the more difficult. Baltimore lost to Cleveland earlier in the year. It's a tough out. Cleveland's a pretty good football team here at the end of the year. Now Baltimore gets the Chargers, only this time in Baltimore. The Chargers get Hunter Henry possibly back, their tight end who's been on IR. Indy travels to Houston, another another division game. So I, I think the teams that rolled in, the Chargers, the Patriots, Kansas City, and the AFC – all rolled into the playoffs. Chargers are you picking on Indy the roll. To, yeah. Are you you're picking Indy to win tonight? Is that what you're doing? They still got to play Tennessee I tonight. I am. I, that's yeah. assuming Indy wins. Mm-hmm. I'm picking yeah. Indy to win. I didn't pick them today. I think Tony did. And the Chargers. I, yeah, I picked Indy. I yeah, picked, yeah, of we picked them as well. Mm-hmm. But they, and you know, the Chargers have played really America, well on the road. America is banking on that. <laughs> Excuse me. Who are you picking <laughs> next weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 always go back to that. Okay, we can always come back to that. But the Chargers have played well on the road, but as you can see, Baltimore 
I mean, it's going to be tough to play on the road. The elements and all that stuff, a lot different weather from being out in L.A. But, but on top of that, defenses, as you said, TB, defense in the playoffs well. is always key, and they travel well. But I think Baltimore's defense is tough, and the way they close out that game today was really impressive. Yeah. On the NFC side, we got a couple of teams playing very good defense that will go on to the postseason. One matchup will be the Philadelphia Eagles and the Chicago Bears, whose defense is probably as good as anybody in football. And that Seattle Seahawks defense going against the Dallas Cowboys, they'll have to do it, Tony. On the road, we'll have one of those games for you next week. But as we get ready to wrap up Week 17 and the 2018 season, let's go to who won the day. Start with you down on the end, Tony Gonzalez. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with some tight ends out there. <laughs> one in Kansas City, Travis Kelsey, and the other one, George Kittle, out there in San Francisco. They both broke the all-time single-season record set by Gronkowski for most yards in his season. But George Kittle from the San Francisco 49ers actually owns the record now. So hats off to them. Hats off to them. And who won the day for me is Lamar Jackson and, and the Baltimore Ravens defense especially. The way that they, you know, finished out the game today, for him to come in and fill in for a Super Bowl champion like Joe Flacco and carry this team the way he has, especially the way he's running the ball, has been really impressive. And good luck in the playoffs, Baltimore. Matt Nagy, 5-11, and 11, last place last year for the Bears, 12-4 and four this year, win the division, finish up the season, played to win today on the road with not a lot to play for, particularly after halftime. And my uh, person is Diane Long. Her son, Chris, and Kyle will be playing oh, one right. another this week. Diane, what a great mom you are. What a Who's thrill that's got to be. Diane Long. Who you picking? Who you picking? Who you picking? We will see you next week before our playoff game for you right here on Fox.